I am a princess not because I have a prince, but because my father is a king. Unknown author. All right, welcome to another episode of Dad Talk. Dad Talk is my series to bring on everyday dads to talk about what is important to them. The goal of Dad Talk is to raise dad voices. My only ask is that we talk about whatever is important to them as it relates to raising their kids. Today, joining me, I have Paul Jamokowski. He's joining me in this episode to discuss what the role of a father should be. Please welcome Paul to Dad Talk. Paul, how are you? I'm doing good, DL. How are you? Very well. Uh, get some things set up here. Get some names up on the screen. All right, there we go. So we're going to talk today about the role of a father. And honestly, this is a topic that I think could be like week after week and not get stale because there is so much here, but we're going to narrow it down. Um, and we're going to, we're going to do this in like 45 minutes and let's see what we get. So first and foremost, tell us about you. Uh, well, yeah, that's, this topic is a lot to unpack. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it'd definitely be a great topic for us to talk about. Uh, so I'm a father of two kids. I've been married for, I want to say 13 years now, got married young. Uh, my wife and I were both 21 years old and, uh, we had our first child in 2019. We got married in 2012. Um, so we had, you know, a good amount of time just to spend with each other before we first had kids. But I've gone through some, you know, significant life changes, even within the time that I've been married. And uh, life's been a real adventure and, you know, just one that I'm excited to take on one thing at a time. It could be scary at times, but becoming a father, I think, was definitely the scariest, but the most rewarding. Absolutely. So how long have you been a father? Uh, so it's, uh, my daughter will be five in October. So okay. going on five years now. Gotcha. I'm, I'm with you. My son turns, uh, he, he turned five in February and it's been a blast now, like you, it was challenging and, you know, like I could be a basket case. So there was some really serious challenges, uh, you know, early on, especially when, I had no idea what, like, I, I still have no idea, but now he can talk. So at least he can communicate. But when he couldn't talk and all he could do was like cry and scream at me. And then I had to cycle through everything. Well, that was, you know, like, am I getting it right? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, so now we're, we're past that stage. So now he can talk and tell me things and I can go, oh, okay, well that makes sense. Or that doesn't make sense. Or I know what he wants. So it's a lot less scary now. In some yeah, ways. I'm going through that right now with uh, my son who uh, was just born in March and, you know, he obviously can't communicate verbally and, you know, he's got very basic needs to meet, but somehow it can be extremely challenging trying to figure out what he needs. And uh, that's why I'm very grateful for my wife for because she does a right. much better job of it than me. <laughs> right. So you have a, a son and a daughter. Now your son is just, uh, you know, right recently born. Your daughter's five years old. So in my opinion, when it comes to the role of a father, there are some generalities like that just go with kids. And then there are maybe specifics that go with, okay, I have a daughter or I have a son. So tell me your thoughts on some just generic things that you see the role of a father and in, in things that you've learned. Cause I assume that you like many of us, me and many others, when you became a dad, you had no idea what you're doing. And if I had said, Hey, come on my show and tell me about the role of a father, you might've been like, how should I know? Right. Or maybe you had an idea, right. Maybe, maybe you had a, you know, an upbringing where, you know, you know, that kind of information w was kind of bestowed upon you early. So you kind of weren't walking in too blind. Yeah. Well, um, my upbringing, I, I had a dad who I was very close with, but, um, he wasn't exactly the, the picturesque father that you would always imagine. Um, he was a very complicated person. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have like okay, a great like model of what I need to try to be for my kids because his whole experience with fatherhood was completely different than mine in just about every way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, becoming a father for myself, the first thing I learned and discovered, 
my life's not about me, not anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we, we're brought up to think like, you know, do what makes you happy. And when you're a parent, not even just a father, just a parent, mm-hmm. um, that's no longer the case. Your life is not about you anymore. And that's the hardest yeah. pill to swallow. But once that really sinks in to me, I think that's one of the most like eye, eye opening experiences that you can have is once you sort of know that and absorb it, it like opens up your eyes to a whole new experience of life. It's pretty crazy. Right. No, yeah, you're right. It's, it's interesting because you, and I think, I think that your life is kind of like not your own anymore changes in dynamic as yep. they get older. Right. So early on, it was about not getting any sleep like ever because you were getting up in the middle of the night or you were at least, you know, woken in the middle of the night. Right. Yep. And, um, it, you know, depending on how, how the family structure works there, you, you know, works the things out. So I remember at first it was just like, okay, my life is not about sleep anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, and then as we got older, you know, or as he got older, you know, it got, it became a little bit about something else. Like, okay, um, now I need to, um, start teaching him stuff, like trying to teach him, you know, what is okay to touch, what's not okay to touch. Okay. He's, here's how we play with this, you know, okay, let's, let's talk to him and let's help teach him, you know, how to talk, you know, those kind of things, how to, how to do things like he's got a toy. Okay. Let's, let's show him this kind of stuff. Right. And then, and, and I think that kind of continues on, and it changes, you know, like now we're, we're into reading, we're learning to read, right? Um, he goes out in the garage with me and sometimes he'll work. And so I'll show him some tools and stuff like that and how to, how to use the tools properly and, and so forth. And, you know, we just do all these different things. So what are some of the things, you know, since your daughter's five, that kind of like, maybe not the generic stuff, but the more specific stuff like, okay, this is what I had to learn as far as being a girl dad. Yeah. I mean, girl dad specifically, that's something I'm still trying to sort of figure out um, because she's so young, you know, it's hard to be like, okay, these are the things that young girls need to be more concerned about than boys. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this stuff at this stage in their lives is kind of geared towards both. Um, But just in general, you know, the things I'm kind of going through teaching her right now, um, you know, if a stranger makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, you don't have to talk to them, things like that. Um, <laughs> which for my daughter is a bit of a problem because she likes to talk to everybody. <laughs> right. As um, kids do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially she's just a very extroverted kid, but, um, yeah, I mean the, the difference in things that I have to kind of teach her now compared to, you know, my son, who's only a few months old, it's, it's mm-hmm. like night and day. I mean, when they're so young, it's, this is how you don't die. <laughs> right. 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 You know? And, right. um, now it's like, I'm teaching her the ways of the world. And she asks so many questions that I frankly can't answer in a way that she can really grasp yet. Right. Um, and you know, that's kind of the balancing act. I think at this stage, you know, when you got a five-year-old who's very curious, Mm -hmm. but can't grasp the concepts of what she's asking about, you know? Right. Right. It's kind of hard. It's, it's, it's a learning experience for me too, because I'm like, how do I teach this kid some of the most basic concepts about life without overwhelming her with information? (laughs) Right. And, and, you know, it's interesting, like sometimes, my, you know, I, I can't think of any specific instance at the moment, but I know that my son has asked questions and some of my answers, my wife's been like, for real. And and she's been that way on two fronts, right? Like, number one, sometimes I just give him like a really long explanation. She's like, you know, you could have just been simple about it. And then other times, you know, I'm being a little bit snarky, not toward him, but just toward the answer, you know, like, mm-hmm. well, you know, like if he was to say something you know, ask a question. I go, well, some people are like this and they're, you know, they're not very good people, you know, and I, I kind of dive in and I, and I go too far and she's like, I don't think you really needed to know all of that, Mm -hmm. uh, specifically at this age. So there's like the, you went too far, but it's okay. Cause it was still relatively age appropriate. He just wasn't interested. And then there was a, did you really need to go that far? You know? (laughs) So, and, and so we have those because we like, so we have always talked to our kid um, you know, our son, we didn't do the baby talk necessarily. I mean, maybe a little bit, but not really. We just, you know, you ask a question, we give him an answer. You know, right. what are you doing on your phone? I'm on Twitter, whatever, you know, like I'm watching a video. What are you watching? Well, I'm watching this and this is what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and so we just, 
we just tell him and there's not, we don't really have a lot of times where, where we don't tell him what's going on. Or maybe if, maybe if the conversation isn't most appropriate, we'll kind of like give him that brief answer. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. Um, and the reason I was asking uh, specifically about a girl is because I had a recent revelation and it was, it was pretty interesting to me. My son is, he's five still. So there's, there's still that, but I feel like he's a bit delicate in mm -hmm. a sense. And he's not like, he's like me. I, ever since I could walk, I was doing face plants and getting up and keep going. Right. And I, and I just, I, I've this poor body of mine has been yeah. abused over a lifetime, you know, from just doing things, jumping off of things, do you just being, you know, over daring. And I don't want him to necessarily be that way. Um, but I was like, maybe he could toughen up a little bit. But then the question was, how do I do this? How do I yeah. toughen him up in a way that's appropriate? And Cause I didn't want to, I don't want to be like growled him and be like, suck it up, get up buttercup. No, there's no blood. Go away. You know, I don't want to be rude about it because I don't think that's healthy. And I had this idea about maybe four or five days ago, a week ago. And I told my wife, I said, I'm going to start wrestling with him. Like explicitly, like we're going to go and wrestle, just wrestle, ro roll around, whatever, pretend punch, all that good stuff. And so we did that. And he really enjoyed it a lot. And he grabbed his, his boxing gloves that he's got. He's got boxing gloves and a little. Um, and a little stand up bag. And he just came over and started punching. And I didn't really put any restrictions on him. I was just like, you know, whatever, just, just have fun. You know, and I said, you know, don't, don't throw any hard toys, you know, don't, don't hit in the, you know, the special area, you know, stuff like that. But this was very, very few rules. And then um, the second time that we wrestled, he was like, hey, um, let's wrestle. He, he called it out. I was like, okay, let's do this. And so we did. And then, he caught a knuckle to his, to his, his, uh, his tooth mm. didn't hurt him or anything, but I was like, Oh, you all right. And I, I made that mistake of kind of like saying anything, but I was like, Oh, you all right. And then you could see, he just started welling up and he was getting ready to just kind of tear up and be done. And then I said, no, nah, you're fine. There's no blood. And I just, I said, let's keep going. And then that pretending to, you know, to fight him again. And he dove right back in. Like immediately, it was the fastest I've ever seen him go from about to cry to stop and just continue on. And I was like, this is it. This yeah. is how I teach him to be a little bit more resilient without going overboard, you know, without sounding like some, some lunatic. And it was just great. So I'm just curious if there are things like that that you've experienced with your daughter, maybe not obviously wrestling or maybe wrestling. I don't know. You know, like I was just, you know, things where you're like, how do I teach her? this whether it's girl related or maybe just general but does anything stick out to you oh yeah absolutely so um i think a lot of people when they meet my daughter they're surprised by how brave that she is mm -hmm. and it's because um ever since she was you know old enough to walk um i was very much of the mindset of like i'm not gonna baby her you know she's gonna right. fall down i'm gonna teach her to get back up and keep going and i've had to have this discussion with my wife where it's like you know when she falls you can't be like gasping oh, are you okay you can't right. be doing that because that's not going to teach that's going to teach your child that they can you know get out of doing stuff or you know it, it does toughen them up mentally when when you don't necessarily like act like those things don't happen but be like oh you fell down let's get you up and keep going right um it's not oh are you okay honey you know what i mean um and I think it's pretty common to teach our kids to do that, especially girls, because, you know, we want to treat them like a little princess. And I always want to treat my daughter like that. But at right. the same time, you know, I'm, I'm creating some, like you said, resiliency in her and some mental and physical toughness by not, um, you know, like I said, gasping. Oh, and my wife has a bad habit of doing that. Right. <laughs> um, she always has. And she's come a long way in not doing that where, you know, when my daughter falls down or, you know, scrapes her knee, it's like, Oh, are you bleeding? Let's brush it off. Okay. And I actually taught her when she was like two or three, how when she falls down, you know, she like, I say, all right, brush it off and let's keep going. So she literally would like brush off her hands. Cause that was kind of the motion I did, mm -hmm. um, you know, brush her hands off and keep going. And I think that's sort of put that in her mind now where when she falls down, she like brushes it off 
keeps going. And a lot of people are surprised because they'll see her fall and they'll be like, Ooh, and I'll be like, don't, you know, don't bring attention to it. And then she'll just get up and keep going. Um, but I have seen people who bring up their kids to every time that their kid falls down, you know, they make a big deal out of it. The kid starts crying and I'm like, it's because you do this. Otherwise they would have been fine. Right. Um, and I'm absolutely going to bring my son up that way too. But in regards to, you know, wrestling with your son, I mean, that taps into, I think a human psyche thing. Um, Mm -hmm. that's, I think sort of our lizard brain, if you will, I don't know if you call it lizard brain, but especially with boys, because we have that inclination to be more uh, physical, I think than girls typically do. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean that it's, it's something that taps into the human psyche with a boy playing with his father, um, kids in general playing with their fathers. It, it, releases endorphins there have been studies done that show that Mm -hmm. Uh, but particularly boys roughhousing because that's sort of ingrained in our dna um i i really believe you know brings out something within us that helps to sort of strengthen us um morally physically mentally um it does something within us and i you know my dad did some of that stuff with me but i definitely want to make sure that i do that with my son especially you know maybe maybe with both kids but my daughter is a little bit more emotionally sensitive and mm-hmm. i think if i roughhouse with her too much she's just not going to be interested in that right mm-hmm. right but i i think my son i definitely will try to not force him to do it but you know encourage him to do so because it will toughen him up and you know right yeah and and it's and it's interesting because in in our case i mean we did and, and it's arguable whether or not we did the oh are you okay too often usually what i end up doing is i just in a very neutral tone i just say you all right and he's like yep yeah. and he's like yeah and i'll say okay we'll keep going right and i just don't make a big a big deal out of it right um and when he because initially when he when his tooth caught my my knuckle i thought that i hit his maybe his hit his lip or something like that i wasn't sure to the extent so i was like oh are you you know and i and i i just said oh are you okay and and i meant to <laughs> I didn't mean to like, it wasn't dramatic, but it was still more than I had intended necessarily. Um, But but what I think is, and I I think for him being an only child and, and I don't, and I'm not speaking from any kind of knowledge, but it just seems to me that it is especially critical for him to wrestle with his daddy because he doesn't really have any other boys that he can wrestle with. Yeah. So that's even more important. Older brother, he doesn't have any friends that necessarily are wrestling just yet. I mean, maybe as he gets, you know, a couple of years older, maybe he'll find some friends and they'll wrestle and whatnot. But right now, that's not the that's not the friends that he necessarily has. Yeah, Um, and they don't encourage him. So, So, um, you know, so it was just very interesting. It was it was a revelation to me, you know, and it was and it was weird because it's not one where I, if you had told me like, yeah, a boy should wrestle with his daddy from time to time, I would have never been like really why it just it was not something that i was necessarily keeping conscious at the front of my mind Uh, until i until i started saying like how do i make this happen how do i get him because he'll get like a little scrape on his knee like a tiny little scrape like where there's like literally one dot of blood and he'll be like oh i need a band-aid i'm like dude you you don't need to you'll be fine it's like no i need a band like you don't need a band-aid Right. And then finally I just give because I'm like, I'm not having this fight with a five year old, right? I was like, fine, just go get the band aid. <laughs> you know. Um, it, you know, so I'm just trying, you know, like that's where I am. And also, of course, he's five. So I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> you know, this isn't Sparta, so I don't need to necessarily get him too strong, if you will. Right. You know, but so it's just very interesting. So what um when it what do you think the most important role of a father would be just in general? Um, not necessarily related to, to boys or girls. Yeah, I think, um, leadership is so huge. And again, you know, this whole thing comes down to like, you know, what are, you know, modern gender norms and things like that. You know, I, I'd love, believe me, I'd love to go down that rabbit hole, but I think just to answer your question, I think the first and foremost thing is leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my goal as a father is for my kids to see me as someone that can, not not in like a bossy way, not in like a I'm more important than mom kind of way, but see me as sort of, all right, I'm bringing us to a place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bring, like bringing your family somewhere, not just right. physically, but, um, you know, you're sort of directing the ship. All right, 
I'm sorry, captaining the ship. Right. Um, you know, making sure that it's clear when, you know, if mom says no, it's like, no, look, if your mom said no, we're not going to go against her. Right. And obviously that's something important for both parents to do is back each other up. But, you know, I, as fathers, I think it's more common for us to be stern and not, not stoic, but more, I guess, like foundational in the family. Mm -hmm. um, and you, it's very common where in households without a father, you know, it's the ship is kind of rudderless and that's not to say mothers can't fulfill that role. Well, but unfortunately it is very common to see that when, you know, in, in single family households, uh, single parent households, rather, um, you know, the, the child can oftentimes be running wild and mom says, stop doing that. And no one is there to really enforce it. Um, right. so, in, in, you know, enforcement is a big part of that in my right. opinion. No, I, I agree. And, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned the gender roles. I'm a little on the old school side. So I look at it and I say, okay, you know, generally speaking, I mean, there are families with slightly different dynamics. You know, maybe the mom is a little bit more aggressive. Like in my home, my mom was the more aggressive one, whereas mm -hmm. my dad was the more patient one. However, if dad got out of his chair to come after you, you was, you, you were really in trouble. Oh, yeah. there, was, there, was, there was, there was nowhere to go. Like sometimes dad might, you know, be like, all right, let's, He's fine now. He's he understands whatever you know. Like he may intervene occasionally, but if dad got if dad got involved, that was it. You're you're done deal. Um, but I but I look I look at it and I say, well, in our house, I'm the more authoritarian one, if you will. Uh, you know, and I'm the you know, and I've on many occasions been like, what'd your mom say? You know, well, absolutely not, right? And then I I immediately put my foot down so that he understands like. Your mom said something, and like you said, you, you're not going to pit us against each other because that's not going to work. And if I just happen to, he, he won't know this, but if I happen to disagree, well, we'll talk about that later, right? But in the meantime, you know, or quietly to the side or something like that where, you know, but, you know, I, I do agree that there is a certain amount of leadership that, that, a, that a man generally has to, um, there is responsible or displaying because what a man displays that's what his child learns right and so, like i said i'm old school so the boys will learn to be that way the girls will uh, learn to expect that um and they may learn to be that way as well and that's fine just you know i, I tend to look at it and say generically speaking gender stereotypes do apply in my mind oh yeah absolutely and i think even um you know the people who are sort of the most like, oh, let's, uh, you know, abolish all gender norms. We'll have to sort of agree like, yeah, okay, there's definitely, you know, some personality differences, generalities, you mm -hmm. know, that we all can agree on um, for sure. And yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to argue that in any way, shape or form that there's no differences. There's obviously differences. Right. Um, right. And, you know, uh, generalities are good in some cases because it helps you to sort of have something to, you know, use it as like a compass. Um, it right. doesn't mean you have to stick to it in every case, because like you said, in, in, um, you know, different households, moms can be sometimes be a little bit more authoritative. I think like even in my, my wife's relationship, she tends to be more like, you know, strict as far as what the kids can or can't do, because I'm more of a free spirit personality, I think, than she is. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like if you know if they're not obeying mom i step up things change right you know and uh that definitely it, it definitely makes a difference right and you know it's interesting i think that a, it's it's a good thing for a dad to kind of i don't want to say enforce stereotypes but kind of in you know for the fi family dynamic um maintain them right right so for instance um my wife is you know maybe I, I would assume a typical woman i don't have a lot of experience with this but she's she's not interested in play fighting with my son and having him you know take swings at her head <laughs> you know, <laughs> and why would that, she be? Right? right like that's not that, that's the, and so I, I laid it out i was like you can wrestle with daddy when it's time to wrestle and you know here, here's like one or two rules we're just going to keep it simple 
And then he'll come and punch me in the head. And I, you know, it's fine. You know, we're, we're, we're having fun and, you know, we're rolling around and, and doing whatever. And then I just tell him, I'm like, you don't play fight with mommy. That way he doesn't accidentally one day decide, you know what? I want to play fight and mommy's here and daddy's <laughs> not. So let me just, let me give her a big whack upside the head. Right. <laughs> because he would probably get a whack upside the head and he would not, he would not like the, you know, how, how it comes, uh, how, how, how she responds. Right. Right. So, you know, and, and that's kind of like this dynamic where I think it's very common for maybe the mom to not really want to play rough and the dads be more inclined to do so. Right. Well, or that's important too. Your daughter, like, let's say you had multiple children, right? Let's say you had like two boys and a girl. The two boys may want to play rough and the girl may or may not. And I think that in many cases, most cases, maybe the girl wouldn't want to. So, yeah. you know, nor do you I want to encourage that. To, I'm sorry, go ahead. Nor do you want to encourage that roughhousing right. with the girls, you know, because that's obviously as adults that can lead down paths of like, you know, you've raised the child to be comfortable in, you know, being physical in the right. wrong ways with a woman. And, you know, that's so that's obviously something you don't want to encourage as a parent. Right. And and so that's why I say I, I, I think the gender stereotypes is is probably something that a man in the house should relatively maintain i mean not strict and be like all right you know boys don't do that they don't they don't color with the color pink or something like that like i i, I think that would be taking it way too far yeah. and and you know it's got to be it's got to be whatever works with the family so like when i was growing up my mom was the tool person it wasn't my dad and so i learned how to utilize tools from my mother instead of my dad mm -hmm. and you know and i don't think there was you know like and so in that case you know my dad still maintained gender stereotypes for the most part you know for other things where that was his wheelhouse where that was part of his personality and you know they just swapped off wherever things just naturally swapped right my mom was more naturally inclined to build to do all these things my dad was not so therefore in that particular case the gender stereotype was a little bit different uh, but in other cases it was relatively the same right you know like hey don't talk back to your mother i'll slap you upside your head Right. You know, th those kind of things. Yeah. So, uh, but that's interesting. You know, I, 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 I'm just curious. I would be curious to get you back on in like five years, which I know, like, will, will our paths even cross in five years? Because it would be great to hear, you know, like the differences and the distinctions between, you know, hey, this is how I raised my son. Here's some things that, you know, how they played out. And then here are the, here they are with my daughter, because, I, you know, unfortunately, she's only a few months old. So you don't have a whole lot in terms of the gender dynamic. Uh, because when they're just yeah. a few months old, they just cry and scream like that's it. <laughs> yeah. So they need food, they need diapers, and they need sleep. And that doesn't matter whether they're a boy or a girl. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's definitely where I think uh, parenting roles are <laughs> definitely differ because I I am kind of clueless and lost when it comes to babies. Like you ask my wife and she's like, yeah, I'm definitely the one who does the primary care for the baby. And, right. you know, I, and the baby prefers her. It's, you know, I, I try to do that role so I can sort of ease the burden off of her, but baby wants mama. <laughs> right. Not much I could do about that, but yeah, definitely when he gets older, it's going to be very interesting to see, um, how, where he will be in four and a half, five years from now, how that will differ from where my daughter is at this point. Um, you know, my daughter really likes to do stuff and play with me, but you know, at the end of the day, she's, she is more interested in playing with her dolls and, and, you know, coloring and things like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know what my son's personality is going to be like. Um, I know when I was young, you know, five years old, I was definitely into little action figures. And, um, my brother, I think back in the nineties had just gotten the first Nintendo system. So I was very interested in that as a kid too. So, um, but yeah, what, what my son will be like, I, I think, you know, I think I will probably have some role in sort of shaping and molding that, which, or, and I would hope so too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how they differ um, and how the parenting style is going to differ between my, my daughter and my son. Right. Um, I definitely, I think I'm going to try to encourage him more to um, engage more in things that um, boys typically would like to do. I, I think boys are typically more interested in, in building things and, um, you know, and rough housing and things like that. So I think I'll try to sort of highlight those things for him. 
uh, but sort of let him also kind of dictate what are his interests and then how can I, you know, help him to enjoy those things safely. Right. In a healthy way. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny, some of the things I think are just natural. So like, I, you know, I'm part of the libertarian community and we're really big on guns, but I don't, I don't make that part. That's not really a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, and so I don't make it necessarily a big part of his, but you know, he's turned pretty much everything in this house into a gun at some point <laughs> on his own. Right. You know, like I had really nothing to do with that. Like he just comes out with a piece of bread. He's like, look, dad, it's a gun. And I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> uh, the other day he, he had grandma's cane and he taped a paper towel roll to it and was pointing it. And he was like using the paper towel roll as a scope. Right. Yeah. That's so, awesome. That's so cool. And I was like, I, and my wife was like, where do you learn that? And I'm like, I, you got me because <laughs> we monitor everything that he watches or I do. And so that's not an issue there. He's watching very appropriate stuff for being five years old. Um, you know, and maybe, maybe one of the little cartoons, they, they showed something similar or whatever, or maybe he saw it in a movie that we, you know, that we did let him watch or something, but it's just weird, you know, how in some ways, he just gravitates to these things anyway, right? Like right. he, the first day I was like, Hey, let's play fight. Right. The first time. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like all aboard. Right. So there's no, 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 I didn't have to convince him. But then the second time he initiated, he was like, Hey, we go play fight or what? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, let's go do this. Right. And so, you know, and then he initiates, you know, with the guns and stuff like that. And, you know, and, but then he also like, he likes things that, um, that maybe aren't quite, it depends on who you talk to really. Uh, like he likes rainbows. He likes bright colors. Mm -hmm. He's got a little art table that he does artwork on, you know, and he'll like, we, we, we tried the glitter. We got rid of it because glitter is just too messy. That's who yeah, I learned the hard way on that one. Uh, but he likes it, you know? And, um, so, and I just look at him like, well, he's just five and he's exploring art or whatever. Like, who cares? You know, no big deal. Um, you know, it, and it was funny because like, we were talking about getting a dog and I was like, well, he can't have a dog until he can name the dog. And I want it to be the dog that he names. And so I would ask him and lately it's been rainbow. That's the name that he wants to use. I'm like, well, great, great job, son. Trolling the whole world. <laughs> uh, because, because none of that is related in any way to the social conversation that's being had out in the world. Right. He literally just likes bright colors and, you know, lots of colors, bright colors and all that. He's got like, you know, tons of markers and crayons and colored pencils and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just interesting. Have you seen similar where your daughter just gravitates to things? Uh, I think you mentioned um, dolls and stuff like that. And so she doesn't really gravitate to some of the quote unquote boy toys. Oh uh, yeah, she's definitely like I think she's more of a a girly girl in a lot of ways. Like she loves to wear the princess dresses, mm -hmm. um, you know, much to her mother's delight. She's the girly girl. Right. Um, you know, she's everything my wife always kind of dreamed of when having a daughter someday. Um, but yeah, I mean, she definitely gravitates towards that those kinds of things. Um, you know, the dolls, the dresses. Um, but you know, like your son, she also is really artistic, mm -hmm. and so I tried or we try to generally bring out. Um, you know, the best in those things. Um, I'm not necessarily going to sit there and play dolls with her. That's just really not, <laughs> I just, you know, I'll fall asleep doing that. Yeah, um, sure, but sure. you know, I'll, I'll put the, we'll put the crayons and the, the colored pencils out for her and, you know, just let her do her thing. And when she's, she's always making stuff for us, like little drawings and coloring papers and saying, you know, I made this for you. And rather than just feeling, Oh, great, great. You know, and I, of course we are guilty of, you know, you know, maybe putting them in a pile somewhere <laughs> when we right. get home. Um, but you know, we generally encourage her like, Oh, that's really wonderful. You need to show your grandparents and things like that. Yeah. Yep. So sort of fostering their interests, I think is good, but doing it in a healthy way, you know, um, like in your son's case, he loves, you know, he loves pretending things are like toy guns. Um, and I think that's really common for boys. And I think, you know, you could take that and make something really special out of it by fostering it like, gun safety for example right um and we do you know, oh safety. that's cool just make sure you don't stick that in anyone's face or point it at anybody right you know um i i think that that's the kind of thing that especially as a dad is so important especially in relation to our boys is harnessing these interests and these passions 
in a way that's healthy, you know, and roughhousing, like, you know, make sure if you're roughhousing, if the person says stop, you stop, right. You know, th things like that. Um, so you can take these interests and hobbies that our kids are interested in and harness them in ways that are going to help them later on in life. Um, yeah. that's definitely something that I strive to do as a dad is, you know, take my daughter's interests and, um, she loves swimming. So I'm really kind of pushing her to be able to, to swim without floaties on, you know, mm -hmm. and that'll help her later down the road in life when, you know, she'll be good at swimming. Right. You know, so yeah, I, I just, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I just think that's a super important thing as, as a parent, but you know, as a dad specifically in regards to leadership, I think that's one way to exhibit that leadership is to, again, take their passions and hobbies and um, facilitate them in healthy ways. Right. Absolutely. And one of the things that we've done, uh, my, my wife and I, when he showed interest in something, we would just, if it was in any way we could make it appropriate, mm -hmm. we would show him how to do it. So like the first time that he started when he was crawling, he got to the stairs and he wanted to go up the stairs. I was like, all right, well, let me just show you how to walk, crawl up the stairs. And so I'm like moving his legs and his arms and helping him walk up the stairs. And then, um, when he, when he would see us plug something in, he would want to plug something in. So we would show him how to plug something in. And then he, he got excited. Like anytime we got the iron out or anything that we had to plug in, like, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And so we'd run over and we'd, we'd watch and make sure that he was plugging it in, you know, correctly. And, you know, not being too, you know, whatever, you know, not to get plug in the outlet, <laughs> you know, and, and the re and, and for us, the reason we, we try to explore anytime he shows interest in something, we try to sh explore it. You know, because maybe he'll like it, maybe he won't. And so the reason for that is we believe that he should experience as much, as many things as possible so that when he, as he gets older, he can kind of have a better idea of what he wants to really pursue. You know, right. so we're, we take, we put him in all these sports. So he's done, um, let's see, so far he's done swimming, he's done soccer, he's done um, basketball. Um, he hasn't done football. I don't know if there, there's probably a football league that he can get involved in at the Y or something like that. Um, we just haven't gotten around to that particular one um, for no particular reason. And, but we, you know, when we see something, we just put him in it. We're just getting him into, um, is it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I think it's, yeah, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he's going to be taking that now. Cool. Uh, and he, he like ma, his, his mom took him and he came home that first day and he's like, dad, dad, I got to show you, I got to show you what to learn. And he's like, all right. And he's like, you get on the ground, I'll get on top of you. And I was like, oh, okay, this seems very scripted, okay? And then he's like, can you get up? Can you get up? And I was like, man, I sure can't, right? You know, <laughs> you got me. Right. Of course, you know, like you gotta kind of, you know, play a little soft with them because I'm, you know, I'm not much bigger, but I am bigger still. So, you know, but it, you know, it's just, and we want to foster this so that because me, for me, I, I, I hate when I see adults that are too afraid to try something. And I don't mean something wild and crazy. Like if somebody says, I'm never trying base jumping. Okay, cool. Like that's, that's, that's not a bad thing necessarily. But like, I've seen people just like, you know, whether it's a job, you know, they, they won't go pursue a new job or, you know, they're just too fearful to try to try things out in the world that I think should be relatively normal. And we want to make sure that he's always willing to go and try these things out at least once and see what it's like. And so we've kind of always tried to foster that. So, um, so in terms of parents are judgmental. I, I, I think we're the most judgmental people on the planet. You mean like towards uh, other parents? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. I think, yeah, I think there's, I think there's good behind that. Right. Right. And, and it's, I mean, I just think we are, and sometimes it goes, we go overboard. Um, yes from your observation of other parents, because when you become a parent, I think you become more aware of other parents and you have the experience to be like, I've been there. I know that I know the struggle you're having, or I know you could be doing better or whatever. Right. Like you, like, especially when we've experienced something, what is something that you've observed from other parents that you kind of like, this happens too often and it's not really good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, not not to rehash the subject again, but you know, when it, when a child is you know doesn't want to do something, where you know, hey, do you want to you know do you want to go? Uh, do you want me to throw you up in the air in the pool and catch you? And they're like, no, no, I'm too scared. Oh, okay, 
So it's like, all right, well, maybe you could push them a little harder. <laughs> um, just parents not really pushing their kids to try new things, I think is just such a, you're doing the kids such a detriment by, by just keeping them in their comfort zone so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that definitely is more common with, with mothers than fathers, but I've definitely seen fathers too, where I'm like, why aren't you pushing them a little harder? Like you're, this is your job. Mm-hmm. Um, especially as a dad is to try and push your kid out of the comfort zone and get them to try something new that might scare them. Right. And, um, you know, I've, I've probably done that maybe a little too hard with my daughter where like, <laughs> sometimes I'll sort of trick her into doing something scary. And then at the end, she's like, what was that? And I'm like, right. I'm just trying to <laughs> just try right. to grease the wheels and see how it comes, you know? But, um, yeah, just seeing parents that don't encourage their kids to get out of those comfort zones, I think is just such a detriment. My parents definitely... We're not great about that with me. Uh, I think my dad tried. My mom, you know, didn't. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, even still, sometimes my dad might have given up a little too easily sometimes. Um, but, gotcha. you know, they, they did try to an extent. But I think that's so important as a parent. And that's not to say, like, they're a bad parent for that. But it's like, that's something you could probably gotcha. do a little more of. Yeah, luckily for me, I was uh, I was already a little bit overreact overactive in in things, and I was all, oh, too daring, and I would just try anything, you know. And if I got hurt, I might try it again just to see if it was, you know, <laughs> like for whatever reason that like no, this time it's going to work, right? And so uh, I got lucky in that particular sense. And it, and it's funny, um, I don't see that out of my son, like he's not daring like his daddy, which in some ways is good because I was again way daring. <laughs> like I've been in the hospital way more times than I really should have been, uh, from, you know, doing things that I really shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't wish that on my mom. And I don't think that was necessarily like, it, I turned out fine. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't necessarily think that it's something that we should strive for per se. Right. Yeah. Like, be so daring that you, that you, that you actually put yourself at serious risk. Um, yeah, not you know, bad friends like that. <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, so, but it's it's funny because when I look at my son, I see a lot of traits from his mom. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I, you know, have a lot of traits from my mom. And so it's kind of weird. I'm like, wait, my husband, like, is this like a trait that I passed down? Like you, you pick up, do you see a lot of traits from your daughter out of you? Oh yeah. I mean, I was kind of shy as a kid. Um, but as I, you know, as I got older, I became much more, I think, um, not extroverted because I've kind of stayed the same in regards to that way, but I've been very like vocal about, you know, if I go to a, to a open mic, you know, I'm, I'm very quick to, you know, applaud and, and, you know, tell someone great job or whatever. My daughter is absolutely that way. Uh, She's definitely not, she's definitely not shy about talking to people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like talking to people. I'm, I'm one of the reasons I'm successful with my job is because I'm good at talking with people. And my daughter's absolutely that way. Uh, her mother was definitely quiet, kind of meek personality as a kid. Um, and I know that because her, you know, her mother's told us that. Um, but Ella, my, my daughter, Eloise is definitely more like me in that regard. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see if, uh, my son turns out more like my wife was as a kid. Right. But, yeah, it, it is definitely interesting to see some of the similarities in personalities of your kids. Right. You know, it, and, and it's funny because I'll, I, 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 the running joke, because my, my wife is Asian, and my son looks very Asian, similar to her. And so I joke and I'm like, does he, does he get anything from me? Cause you know, <laughs> like he really likes sports and I wasn't really also good at sports and he is, he's more artistic. Now I might've been artistic when I was a little kid because, um, you know, these days I'm not just because I'm not very good at it, but you don't really look at it as whether you're good at it or not. When you're five, you're just having fun. Um, and so now I'm older and we don't, we don't really do things for fun in the same way that you used to when you were a kid. Right. So, so, you know, he may, he may end up being a little bit more like me in the art department. You know, maybe he started out like having fun, but maybe he grows up and says, you know what? I'm not as good as I, w- I I think I need to be. And I'm actually better at this and I'd rather pursue this instead or whatever. And so we'll see. Um, but it's just funny. Cause like I sometimes joke and then every once in a while I'll see something like, yep, that, that that's, that's his daddy right there. Yep. Yep. That's for sure. So like, like his daddy can, like he can be a little, like he's very, very uh, well-mannered, very well-mannered, mm-hmm. very nice, very polite, 
very good kid. You ask him to do something, he does it. He doesn't give you a hard time. You know, every now and then, usually when he's being, you know, a pain, he's tired. That's almost always the reason. It's, it's very rare that he's not tired. Um, and sometimes when you're kind of pushing him hard, like, hey, I asked you to go pick up your toys. Go pick them up right now, right? So we might get into it, and then he'll get spiteful. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, well, that, there's his daddy right there. Uh, cause his mommy's not like that. So yeah. that's funny. Um, any, anything else that you've got in, in terms of the role of a dad that you've experienced or just observed or that you're looking forward to? Oh, geez. Um, yeah, I mean, my daughter and I are so close now. And I think a big part of the reason is because I, um, push her to do things so much and she's grown a lot because of it. Um, and I look forward to doing that with my son also. And so if, um, I guess, uh, you know, I obviously kids change over their lives and, you know, their desire to do things changes. Like my daughter may not always want to spend time with me when she gets older. She'll probably want to be with her friends more, but right. I'm not going to look back on anything in regret now. Um, and I was, if I had a word of encouragement for other dads out there, it's, um, push yourself out of your comfort zone so that you can help push them out of their comfort zone. Awesome. Well, Paul, I'm going to put you backstage for just a second. We can talk in, in a moment. Uh, let me close out the show here really quickly. It was great having you on. I enjoy talking about the role of father. And I think it's very good advice to push our kids just a little bit. Get them out of that comfort zone so that they can be the best version of who they uh, who they can be. So great advice, sir. Appreciate having you on. Stick Thank around you. for just a second here. All right, folks, that's the show. Hope you enjoyed it. This was a fabulous conversation with Paul and I, and I hope you found it informative and inspiring. I want you to be sure to catch me Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern, for an informed discussion on politics and culture. And then on Thursdays, hopefully I can get guests on here to interview. Uh, that's when I do the candidate interviews for libertarians. And then on Fridays, Dad Talk. Always look forward to that. I love talking to dads. It's absolutely great. Make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.libertydad.com or if you prefer, go to rumble.libertydad.com. While you're there, please let me know how I'm doing by leaving me a comment. Last but not least, I want you to remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. I want you to have a great week. Catch you next time. For now, I'm out.